you don't have to fight for the self-defense. I have counted it is 19 conditions are mentioned by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, while the war is going to take place. Don't destroy any uh, temple or synagogue or the churches. Don't kill women. Don't kill children. Don't burn the, uh, the, the fields, right? Don't you know, kill the elderly people. And uh, don't burn the, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, no burning should take place. No building should be destroyed. Even anyone surrenders or maybe runs away, don't you know, kill him from the back. All these conditions are there. So many conditions that only, they said that you can fight only with those who fight with you. This is Ozen Ali Lazina, Yukataruna, Be Annaham Zolim, that the, 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 the battle, the war is permitted to those who are being persecuted. Be Annaham Zolim. Then, of course, then is permitted, otherwise it's not. So Islam does not permit anyone to kill innocent citizens. And uh, to me, it's a heinous crime which is being committed. And our Jamaat, our Jamaat is really clear in this aspect that we condemn in any kind of fraction. Our slogan is love for all and hatred for none. This is what the Prophet has brought, the teaching for us, that be kind to every human being. Don't insult anyone. Don't harm them with any action of, of your bodies or anything like that. So he has brought the message of love. And I, we believe this is the true teaching of Islam which has been presented by Ahmad of Qadiyan. This is another, I can say, how we are shoulder to shoulder from different faiths. And we invited them, our doors are open. Talk about you, whatever your faith is, whatever your beliefs are. This is another, you know, like, a, I would say, presentation that we hear everybody. We love everyone. And we are just belong to the same family, family of God. Thank you very much. I guess there is only one question we have. One question. Most of the Christians, so we will have that after that. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much, and God bless you. Sorry, I wish to stay more longer, but I have another meeting. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our last speaker is going to be Mr. Shakatu Patel, the speaker on the, on the Hidudum. I have requested him that he can cut short his speech now, we can go late. And we got the time we got it for him to do it back again. So we have five to seven minutes to get it. Thank you. Apologies, I was uh, late. Thank you for filling in, and uh, thank you for hanging around to hear me. Um, just uh, namaste and samubarak. Samubarak means New Year's greetings. Last Saturday was Diwali, the Hindu festival of lights, which we also celebrate as the beginning of the Hindu New Year. Samubarak is actually an Urdu Muslim term that Indians tell each other throughout the world to welcome other uh, Indians, Hindus, into, or other faiths, into the Hindu New Year. And it's also very appropriate for today's interfaith dialogue about life after death. Uh, as last week we did celebrate Diwali, a tradition is sweets and gifts. So for everyone, we have um, some Indian sweets. Uh, it, um, I brought some. Uh, at the back table, and for everyone as well, a gift. So what we have, what we have is, uh, this is a, it's a calendar. Uh, it's still current, so it's not an outdated calendar, but it's, a, it's a principles of Hinduism. And each page has a key principle of Hinduism, very short, nicely explained. And then in the back, there's a little bit more, half page more, about those key principles as a way of promoting the understanding. And we actually, um, and uh, I guess Safir, if you can come up here. We, we have a lot more for everybody here. So. Okay. So, okay. There's more in this purple bag, if you need any. And one also for the uh, guest panelists as well. So, um, life after death has a very unique perspective in Hinduism. In fact, according to Hindu belief of reincarnation, right now I'm speaking to you today in one of my many life after deaths. 
Over 10,000 years ago, well before world religions existed as we know them today, yogis and sages in India spent many years in deep meditation contemplating life and understanding the inner workings of the universe around them. From this developed a deep understanding of astronomy, math, and the science of life. These teachings were recorded in four books called the Vedas, which literally means final knowledge. Interpretation of the Vedas formed the base of Hinduism. The Vedas proclaimed that one's only true eternal self is their soul, called the Atma, which is the life force that causes a heart to beat and pump life to the rest of the body. Without this life force, a perfectly good body immediately becomes a dead and useless corpse. Very much as uh, he had spoken about um, God, you know, the soul permanently leaves the body and dirt goes back to dirt. Hindus believe that the soul Atma never dies, and upon the death of one's body, God moves the soul into another life form, higher or lower, according to the good and bad karma throughout their prior lives. Moving of one's soul Atma from the death of one body to give birth to another body is called reincarnation. These yogis and sages also realize that all life forms of plants, insects, animals, and humans get a birth, struggle to survive, make offsprings, or in the case of plants, seeds, and eventually die. Their offspring then follow this same endless cycle of births and deaths. The sages wondered and questioned, how could one find eternal happiness through this endless cycle of births and deaths? The only way to find eternal happiness is by having one soul, Atma, permanently escape from the cycle of births and deaths, and having one's soul, Atma, permanently reside in the abode of God Supreme, called Akshadam. The released souls of Akshadam no longer experience any births or deaths, and continually experience the divine bliss in close proximity to God Supreme. Of all the life forms that one soul, Atma, reincarnates to, only the human life form has the mental capacity to realize God and permanently escape the cycle of births and deaths. After 8.4 million births and deaths of different life forms, the soul Atma finally gets a human birth. It is most important that once given a human birth, that the opportunity to realize God with God-realized saints and thereby escape the cycles of birth and death is not wasted. So basically, in Hinduism, Life after death is more life and death through reincarnation until one realizes God and God realized saint to end this otherwise endless cycle. Does everyone kind of understand that concept? Uh, you may have heard of reincarnation before. Because uh, there's a, a little bit more uh, advanced topic I just wanted to share with you that you may have not heard of before or been explained to you. At the end of the 18th century, a boy named Nilkum, and the, what I'm going to explain to you actually relates not only to philosophical understanding, but it also very much relates to scientific understanding of how our universe was created. Hinduism is one of the religions that actually supports those scientific theories as part of its uh, religion as well. At the end of the 18th century, a boy named Nilkum left home at the age of 11 and traveled around alone around almost the entire perimeter of India for seven years asking one question. When not getting a satisfactory answer, he would leave and move on to the next place in India asking the question again. It was not until he reached the western state of Gujarat, India that he received an agreeable answer. From there he became known as Swaminarayan Bhagwan and spread his teachings in worshiping God along with the God realized Gunati, Saint Gunatitan Swami. If anyone got a chance to see it, an IMAX film called Mystic India played at the Franklin Institute until February depicting this journey. The question that Nilkan asked was the nature of the five eternals, analogous to the five Maxwell equations of physics, which explains light and electromagnetic behavior. Not so much in those technical terms, but similar in its importance. Uh, there are five eternals, Parabrahm, Brahm, Maya, Ishwar, and Ji. And it's in that order. The Parabrahm Brahm, Maya is in the middle, and below that is Ishwar and Ji. Maya is the illusion creating the attachment of our soul Atma to worldly attachments. And that separates us from enjoying the proximity of God. If we escape, at the very bottom is Jeev, which is our Atma under that influence of disillusion. 
of attachment to this body, to this world. If our jeev, our soul, under the influence of maya, could detach and shed its maya, go above maya, and attach itself to God Supreme, Bharabrahma, 